All right, so hopefully you can all see my screen. Now this is the before image that we're going to be working on. Uh, what I'm going to do is let me show you some of the after images as well. So here is what we're hoping to get to by the time we're done. So already a beautiful girl, but uh, maybe we can make ourselves even uh, look even a little bit better. So uh, those of you who aren't familiar with, uh, with Paint Shop uh, or this particular version, I'm in the edit mode. So this is where you're going to find all of the tools that you need. Uh, there is also a learning center, and you'll find that it'll be either on the left or the right-hand side. And just to point out where that is, uh, on my case, it's on the right-hand side of my screen, and it behaves like a browser. Uh, so it has the most commonly used tools that are easily accessible in different uh, categories. So I'm going to be using quite a number of tools that are in the Retouch and Restore category. Uh, I'm not going to be using the Learning Center in this, in, for this instance because I'd like to show you where they actually are in the menus and in the toolbars, but just know that if you ever want to come back and, and try and find some of those tools that we are working with, the Learning Center is a great place to start. Okay, so with that, let me just tuck that. I'm actually going to pin this little guy out of the way. There's an option for with palettes that I can have them auto-hide. So I'm just going to make a little more real estate for myself as we work. Okay. So with this image, uh, what I'm going to do to, to start with, because I'd like to show you the stages that we go through or that I go through when I work on an image, is in the Layers palette on the right-hand side, this is the photo that I'm working on. What I'm going to do is duplicate it so that I always have an original I can go back to, uh, and also that I can kind of break things apart so we can see step-by-step step some of, the, some of the, uh, the tools that I'm using. So to duplicate a layer, I'm going to right-click on it. And in the pop-up window, or the pop-up menu, I'm going to choose Duplicate. Okay, now just to kind of walk you through this, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to label this uh, layer. I'm going to call it Skin Smoothing, because that's where I'm going to start here. Skin Smoothing and the Blemish Fixer, which is probably one of my favorite tools, because it's now possible to have a good face day every day. <laughs> okay, so Skin Smoothing and Blemish Fixer. So to begin with, uh, what I'm going to do is up in the Adjust menu, we have an option called Skin Smoothing. And this is kind of that all over magazine look. So instead of manually coming in and, and working on small blemishes here and there, I'm going to go to choose Skin Smoothing to start with. Okay. All right. So. To be honest, nobody looks fantastic when you stare at someone's pores, so <laughs> this is kind of a the stark reality view. But uh, with skin smoothing, what it does is you'll notice that the detail in the eyes, the teeth, the lips are all preserved, but what it's doing is just doing a general smoothing of the texture in a face, the pores, and so on. Now, there is a slider control, um, so you can slide it all the way up and get a very kind of fuzzy look, which we don't really want. I think less is more in this case. So I'm going to leave it right about halfway and say OK. OK. Now let me zoom in a little bit on this image. I'm actually going to come up to the property bar here at the top and go to 100%. So this is our lovely lady. Now she still has some blemishes, but in the Layers palette, let me turn off the visibility of this one. So you can see here's before. I'm going to turn the visibility back on, and there's after. So it's kind of just a gentle smoothing of the skin, hence the name. And next what I do is for more obvious blemishes that we have, uh, sometimes scarring as well. We can kind of cheat and get rid of all of that. I go to the makeover tools. Now these makeover tools are available in uh, previous versions of Paint Shop. I know some of you are using X3, X2, and older ones. So to find those makeover tools uh, in the tools, Box, toolbox right on the left hand side, you'll notice this little compact. Now there is a, a flyout menus here. So in this particular version, in X4, we've grouped both the red eye tool, uh, red eye removal, and the makeover tools together. So I'm going to choose makeover. And at the top here at the tools option bar, you'll notice that there is actually, in this case, five different makeover tools. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the first one, and that's the blemish fixer. Now the blemish fixer does exactly what it says, but the way it works, it also is a fantastic tool for doing anything like photo restoration, or if you've done, uh, say, scanning of images and there's dust on, on, the, uh, on the scans themselves. The way it works is, uh, and I'm actually going to increase the size here so you can see it a little bit better, 
is you'll notice that there's two circles. With the blemish fixer, whatever is on the inner circle here, it's going to use the, the colors and the, and the pixels in between those two rings to do a gentle smoothing or basically a very smart cloning. So as I click, it's actually removing those spots. So this is a great way to do, if there's something a little more obvious, uh, I'm actually going to hit my spacebar key, which gets me my panning hand so I don't have to change tools. So I'm just holding my spacebar to pan around my image. And when I let go of it, I get back to my blemish fixer. So what I would typically do is, once I've done something like skin smoothing, just to get rid of kind of the all, give it an all over uh, adjustment, I'll use that blemish fixer to come in and just get rid of the obvious kind of spots or blemishes, or in some cases it'll be um, scratches on an image or dust and so on. So I'm just going to pan around, and typically what I do is I try not to get rid of anything that looks natural, so freckles, uh, moles, something that, you know, is part of a pair, person's appearance and character, you kind of want to leave alone. So I just try and get rid of stuff that really we wish wasn't there anyway. So I'll pan around and kind of just touch that up. Now, with the blemish fixer, the larger the cursor size, the more it's going to be doing um, blending together or cloning into the center. So in some cases, if you get too close to an outline, so in this case, if I start doing around her eyelashes, it's going to be using whatever's in between those circles. And you can get sometimes a very, you know, not the effect you're looking for. So let me undo that. And if I need to, what I'll do is just make the, the blemish fixer smaller. So to make any brush size smaller, some of you may already know this, but you can go up to the tools uh, options bar at the top here and use the, the arrow keys or you can click down and there's a, a general slider here to change the size. But I find that uh, I don't like to have to stop what I'm doing and go into a toolbar if I don't have to. So a shortcut for this to change brush size is actually if you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, when you hold down the Alt key, you can actually click your mouse to drag in and to drag out to change the brush size on the fly. So I find that a lot easier to make those quick changes rather than going into a toolbar. And that's the Alt key. I just hold that down and I can quickly resize my brush and then come in and continue working. Okay. So that is, I don't want to go too crazy here, the blemish fixer. This poor lady has... A little bit of fuzz. We're just going to smooth that out so no one has to know it's there. Well, okay, just us now know it's there. Okay, I'm going to leave her freckle and just touch it up that way. Okay, so let me just go ahead. I'm going over to the layers palette now and let me turn off the visibility of the layer I'm working on. So here's before we added some skin smoothing effect and the blemish fixer, and now here's after. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the full image a little bit better. So again, after and before. Okay, there we go. Now something else that I like to do, and it's not always required, but uh, a little hair removal <laughs> sometimes is uh, is a good thing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this uh, the layer I've been working on with skin smoothing, just so I can basically show you the phases that we go through. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, and I'm going to duplicate that layer. And just so we can keep track of what's going on, I'm going to call this the Scratch Remover. Now this is a fantastic tool for obviously if you're moving, say, scratches on a scan for, or you're doing, say, photo restoration. But one of the handy things in the Learning Center, and this is where I got this tip, in the Learning Center, and I'm going to come over here and browse to Retouch and Restore category, and you'll find that uh, when you choose a tool, so I'm going to choose the Scratch Remover in this case, not only will you often get the step-by-step the -step guide on what to do and how to use the tool, but there'll also be um, tips as well and hints. So in this case, this tool actually tells me it's great for removing not just wrinkles or scratches, uh, telephone lines, any sort of straight line flaw uh, is a great use of this tool. So that's kind of where this uh, my use of the hair remover technique came in. So this is the, uh, the scratch remover. I didn't actually have to pick it myself. When I went to the Learning Center, it chose it for me. Uh, but you would find that on the toolbox here on the left-hand side is the scratch remover. And if I hit the arrow, just let me point out the other tools that are in here, uh, clone as well as object remover. So this is where you're going to find that scratch remover. 
don't worry if you don't remember. The Learning Center is always there to kind of help you pick those, those common tools and, and walk you through how to use them. So the scratch remover is very much like that blemish fixer that we used. So in here, let me just go ahead and come over and mute one of the lines. There we go. All right. So the, uh, the scratch remover, again, very similar. So let me just show you how this works. Actually, let me make this a bit bigger. So let me go up to the toolbox here, the tool options. And when I start to click and drag, notice that it's, it's essentially three rectangles. So like the blemish fixer where we had uh, an inner circle and an outer circle, the scratch remover is doing something somewhat similar. So whatever I place on the inside, so in this case, let me go ahead and drag this over a hair. It's going to use what's in those outer rectangular areas to try and figure out what to blend in and what to clone in. So as I click and drag this over a straight line, and I'm going to make this a little smaller because I don't want it to look at too much, I can actually use it like a very smart hair remover. Um, sometimes you can call it a tweezer, to be honest. So I can come in here and she's got some stray hairs. Uh, the trick is to be use the smallest brush size that you need in this case and quite often I find if I do it in short segments I get a better result so right now I'm starting to kind of get into the hairs and the lashes and so on but let me just go ahead and do something a little bit small in here and for those well for those days let's use it as a tweezer <laughs> so I'm gonna make this again smaller because I'm dealing with very fine fine hairs but if it's a distraction in your photo I find it per a great opportunity just to clean that up and get rid of it so if I drag it over individual hairs treat them like really like scratches, uh, you can essentially use it like a tweezer. And again, sometimes less is more. You don't want anyone to look, well, it's up to you, but you don't want to look too perfect. We like to keep the images that we're working on look quite natural and not look like they were touched up. So if I come in here and just kind of gently remove those individual hairs, I can give this image a, a very nice kind of polished look. And of course, if you go a, a little overboard, always being able to go and, and undo. And in my case, that's one of the reasons that I sometimes prefer working in separate layers. So in this case, if I, let me zoom out a little bit so we can see before. Let me move this image up. So we had a couple of stray hairs. Uh, let me turn the visibility off on this layer. So I'm using Scratch Mover. If I turn that off. You can see that there's a hair blowing across her face, across her eye, a couple extra hairs in her eyebrows and so on. So you can continue using this as much as you feel necessary. Um, and again, adjusting the size uh, and uh, I, that's kind of why I like to use layers so I can always kind of go back and adjust if I need to here and there and it kind of helps me keep my work organized. So that's a couple, just a couple of things for fixing blemishes, stray hairs. Um, but let's look at some of the other makeover tools. Now, one that I'm going to use next is actually the toothbrush. Now, her teeth are obviously fantastically white already, um, but not every day is like that. And sometimes some of us who like to drink coffee uh, know what our photos look like. So let me, again, duplicate this, the most recent layer so I can connect show and hide as I go along. So I right click on it and duplicate. And I'm going to name this one toothbrush. And I'm going to give you a couple of tips on toothbrush because toothbrush can be very powerful depending on how you use it. So with the makeover tools, I did mention there were multiple makeover tools. I'm going to come over to the toolbox on the left and click that little compact makeover tool. And the individual makeover tools show up at the property bar here at the top. So we were looking at the blemish fixer. Uh, now we're going to go to the toothbrush. So the toothbrush uh, works basically in a click or two. Now by default a lot of these tools are set to a very strong level. So you'll notice if I come back up to the, the options bar here, my strength is set to about 36. Quite often you'll find tools will be set to 100. Um, I tend to dial them down to, to make them a little weaker so that I have, I can choose to what level I want her teeth to be white. Do I want crazy Hollywood white? Eesh, sometimes that looks a little unnatural, so I'm going to undo that. Uh, so I'll bring the strength down, and that way I have the option of clicking maybe more than once if I want to bring the brightness up. So let me just click once and twice over here, and I get a, a much nicer natural look. Now her smile is, is really very 
obvious. Um, sometimes, depending on the lighting, you'll find that if you use the toothbrush, sometimes it'll turn a surrounding area white as well. It's looking for similar colors to replace, by, basically to brighten. So to control how um, uh, how much of the, the area is whitened, depending on the quality of the photo. I'm going to undo this, and I'm going to go ahead and use a selection tool. To use selections, there's, there's quite a number of selections, and they can be quite powerful as you start customizing the way they work, but we're going to keep this fairly, uh, fairly basic. Uh, so in the tool box, you'll notice this is the third option down in my case, and I'm going to use the freehand selection which is basically allowing me to draw a selection around, in this case, the teeth. Now, I'm not going to be too accurate because I don't have to be in this case. Uh, I'm just going to click and drag around this area here. Times when I do this, it, it, I don't need to in her case, but quite often if you have fairly yellowed teeth uh, and the lighting is, uh, is not so great, um, you'll find that sometimes the toothbrush gets a little crazy and you'll have gums that are lighter than you want them to be, or lips perhaps. So that's a case where I would use a selection tool. Select area, I'm going to come back to the makeover tool and make sure toothbrush is selected. And also, I keep the strength low so I can you know, click more than once. And that way you can be assured that the whitening effect won't spread out and, uh, into your image. Okay. Now to deselect that area, you can go to the selections menu and choose select none, or quite often what I do is I just press the shortcut key, which is control and D to deselect uh, a marquee selection. Okay. So we've covered uh, skin smoothing and blemish fixing, the scratch remover kind of as a hair, uh, hair remover almost, uh, and the toothbrush. Now something that I do depends on kind of what the image looks like. Um, I then go into some of the adjustment brushes and Paintshop Pro has a fantastic selection of adjust adjustment brushes. And to be honest, I, I've only just recently learned to appreciate them and start using them, and I'm using them a lot. You'll find those adjustment brushes in the toolbox, uh, and the icon may appear different depending on which one you have selected, but you should find it most likely under the paintbrush tool. And when you choose the flyout, you'll notice there's quite a number of them. So these brushes are, uh, unlike using a, an all-over adjustment through the adjustment menu to change brightness or contrast or something of that nature, this is actually a paint brush that applies an adjustment. So in this image, uh, before I continue though, I'm going to again duplicate that layer so I can show you kinda how we're progressing as we go. So I'm just going to right click and duplicate. And in this case, I'm going to call this one my adjustment brushes. Okay, so the whites of her eyes, we do have a, a makeover tool that is a, an, eye, an eye drop tool, essentially. So if you've got red eyes, allergies of some sort, you can just give a little bit of a pop. But um, I like to use the adjustment brushes because I can use it on uh, really many elements of the image. So in the brushes drop list here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose uh, lighten and darken. You can also choose tools like dodge and burn to kind of highlight or add uh, more contrast to certain areas. So it's, it's kind of a personal preference. Uh, I'll show you the dodge brush. And let me zoom in a bit actually here so you can see a little better of what I'm trying to accomplish. So let me select that dodge brush. And what happens is, is wherever you start brushing with it, it'll start adding uh, highlights of that area or lightening that area in some respect. So if you're trying this as well, sometimes you'll find that you're getting a very kind of um, strong result. And this is where it's worth playing with these brushes a bit and kind of getting a feel for how they work. You'll notice in the tools option, there are a number of, of ways to customize this brush. The brushes in Paint Shop are incredibly powerful and well worth um, getting to learn how to use. Quite often, the, the two features that I really mostly start adjusting are the size. And again, the shortcut for changing size is just to hold down your Alt key and to drag your brush size in and out to kind of change it on the fly. The other option I use a lot is opacity. So instead of having a very strong result, so let me turn that to 100. And you'll see as I start using on the white to right, it very un, kind of unnatural look, which I don't particularly like. So let me hit Control Z to undo that. So I'll bring the opacity down quite a bit. So that gives me the opportunity to start building as I go. 
and to control the amount that's being applied here. So let me just whiten, give a little white surprise, a little bit of an adjustment. There we go. I can do the same with the dodge, or sorry, the, the burn brush. So if I wanted to add a little more contrast over in the adjustments uh, brushes here, I'm going to choose the burn tool. And I'm just going to give her eyelashes a little more contrast here. So again, I tend to keep the opacity down so it's not set to 100. Yours may be by default. And all I'm doing is just kind of adding areas of contrast or highlight that I want to start showcasing. So very subtle effect. If I turn off that layer, you'll see that it doesn't do, I haven't done anything too intense. If I turn that layer back on, the whites of her eyes are a little lighter. Um, her lashes have more contrast to them, kind of gives her eyes a little more depth to them. So uh, just a couple of uses of the of those brushes can really give you a lot of control over how your, how your images are being uh, modified. Another one that I really have started using that, well, honestly, it was just recently I discovered it and I was very excited by it, <laughs> is in the uh, adjustments brush area again. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to work with a couple more of these to show you where they are. Um, the a couple of things that I have liked using is the saturation. Now you'll notice that a couple of these brushes have really two options. So we have a lighten and a darken. There's a saturation up and down and the same for hue up and down. Now the way this works is when you're using a mouse, or in my case uh, I'm actually using a pen and tablet, um, but essentially if I left click with my mouse, what happens is, just a brush on her face here, it's, in this case it's increasing the saturation. If I right click, it decreases it, or in this case, it's turning it black and white. Okay, so if I wanted her eyes to be black and white, I can right click and it's desaturating. That's not really what I want to do in this case. So I'm going to undo those steps here. And all I'm going to do is actually on her eyes, I'm going to increase the saturation. Now, this is going to, we're actually going to change her eye color completely in a moment, but just to give you an idea of ways that you can start just adding um, kind of extra accents to it. Uh, another brush I've done recently, again, I'm just kind of sticking with some of the brushes because they are, they really give you a lot of manual control uh, as opposed to kind of an all-over fix. Uh, the one I've been using quite often is now the change to target brush. Now that sounds a little interesting, I know, but in my case, this image has, she's got some red areas uh, that aren't really blemishes, but just the tone of her skin isn't exactly even, and I want to fix that. So in, again, over on the brushes side here, I'm going to choose one called Change to Target. Now, this is also, we're going to use this uh, to show kind of how you can change eye color very quickly as well. Uh, I'm going to decrease this brush size a little because it's, it's quite large. So my shortcut, again, is to hold down the Alt key and then I can click and drag into the center of the brush to make it smaller, or I can drag out to make it larger. Saves me a couple of seconds, but it adds up over the course of a, of a day. Make that a little larger. Now, the change to target brush is going to allow me to use the eyedropper. Again, I can go over and choose from the eyedropper tool. You'll notice on the toolbox, it's uh, the fourth tool down, and that'll allow me to, to pick a color. Actually, let me choose that here. And then I can pick any color, and you'll notice in the materials palette, that's the, the foreground that I'm working with right now. That's the color I'm going to be using. But let me go and grab that brush again, the changed target brush. And the shortcut for going to the eyedropper, rather than changing tools, because again, it, you know, after a, a, a little while, it starts to feel like a bit of a, uh, a speed bump <laughs> in getting the job done. If you hold down the control key on your keyboard, it also turns to the dropper tool. So I can come over here and say select, I'm going to just tap right here and choose this color. And when I let go of the control key, I'm right back to the brush I was using. Okay, so just again, saves you a little bit of time. Same thing for what I'm about to do now is holding down the spacebar key, and that just toggles me over to the panning tool. So again, just kind of a little faster way to go. All right, the changed target brush. So I'm going to select a color, and again, I tend to make the opacity quite low if I can, and it's not, doesn't look like it's doing a lot, let me pan over here, but I want to get rid of, say, um, if I wanted to get rid of the red in her cheeks, I happen to think it looks good, but let's just, for sake of argument, and she hold down the control key to pick a tool, or pick, sorry, pick a color, and as I begin brushing, it'll start applying that color, so right now I'm applying rather 
red color. Let me undo that. Let me come up here and actually do it to this reddish area, discolored area here. So choose the color with the control keys, my eyedropper, and it'll start just toning out that that uh, reddish area here. I could choose this from any color. So for instance, if I wanted to add color to someone's cheeks, I'm going to choose, say, a color from her lips. And then I could start applying color if I wanted to as well. Okay. Now I would play with some of the settings here again, bring the opacity down to make it quite a uh, smooth transition. I tend to make my brushes rather large as well. But that tool when used with not just with the skin but it makes it really easy to also change eye color. So let me go ahead and uh, there we go. Uh, hang on. Let's do another layer because I'd like to keep the eyes separate. So Craig, I think you're on the line there. I'm just going to go ahead and mute your mic for a moment if you don't mind. I think you can unmute yourself. Uh, Craig is our quiet in, in the back scenes moderator so for any of you who have questions uh, he'll help be able to answer some of those for you and uh, we'll make sure that we get the most common ones answered at the end. So eyes. Let me go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this layer um, that I've been working on just so you can see the difference and keep things separate. So I was choosing that to try and even out skin tone, but let's do something even more uh, bold statement. Let's change eye color with that. Now there are a number of techniques to do this. Um, for those of you who've been using uh, Paint Shop for a while, you probably know a couple of different techniques. I'm actually going to show you two that I, I have recently started using. First one is going to be, since we're using that change to target brush, let's go ahead and kind of stick with that one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead in the materials palette and choose, let's go ahead and choose maybe a blue. And I'm going to paint directly on her eyes. Now the brush is quite large, so I'm going to just hold down my Alt key and make that a little bit smaller here. And with that change to target, if I paint directly on her eyes, I'm keeping all of the detail, but it's changing it to that particular shade. So this is where a pen and tablet do come in handy because, frankly, working with a mouse is kind of like painting with a rock, so it can be a little awkward. Um, but with this brush, I can very, very quickly make uh, a change as subtle as skin tone or as bold as, as your actual eye color. Now that's one way to do it, um, but the, the next uh, way of changing eye color that I want to show you is going to give you more, even more flexibility of how you work with um, with eye color and, and using the color changer tool, which is a separate uh, a separate tool that we've introduced. Again, if you're working on a previous version of Paint Shop, I believe the color changer is available up to X2, but I will be corrected if I'm wrong. <laughs> All right, so in this case, uh, I'm not going to be duplicating layers. I'm actually going to create a brand new layer. Uh, what I'm going to do is let me just turn off the one that I've just done with eyes. And I'm going to come down in the layers palette and the, the options may look a little different. The layers palette has had a bit of a makeover itself in this version. But there should be an option for a new layer. Uh, some of you in X3 will find that new option towards the top of the layers palette. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a new raster layer. So essentially it's going to be a blank layer. And I'm going to call this eye color spelled in a creative way, color, there we go. And you'll see on the, on the layers palette it's actually blank. I'm going to use just the standard paintbrush tool. So over here on the toolbox, right above those adjustment brushes that I was using, we have the paintbrush tool. Uh, if you don't see it, let me just click the fly out. Uh, you'll, it's, it could be also as the airbrush tool, so depending on the symbol that you see here, just click the arrow. Uh, the shortcut key is the B key, so if you're no idea where it is, just hit press B on your keyboard and it'll actually pick the tool for you. Okay, this is going to look awful for just a minute and then it'll look awesome, so hang with me. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead, we'll stick to the same kind of blue that we were using before. And I'm going to paint on this blank layer and because it's uh, the topmost layer, it's the one that's going gonna, gonna to hide her eye for a moment. So this is strange and probably not what you're looking for at all, but that's okay because there is a very cool technique that a lovely colleague of mine 
pointed out quite recently, and I was very impressed. So I'm starting to use this a lot. Okay, it looks awful, I know. <laughs> but this is where some of the, the blending options and dealing with layers really is going to increase the, the power of what you're doing and give you a lot more creative options. On the layers palette over here, there is a drop-down list and that offers different blending modes. So the way the, the colors that will blend between the, the layer that you're currently on and the one underneath, you essentially blend layers together. The one I'm going to choose is Hue. And when I choose Hue, I actually can see right through into the underlying layer and it's just changing the, the, the adding the color that I've added to that blank layer to the layer underneath it, blending those two together. Now it looks very similar to what I was doing before with using that adjustment brush to, to change to a different target color, but because I've done it this way and I actually have that color sitting on a, on a separate layer, this allows me to use the color changer tool. On the tool box here on the left, um, you may see the flood fill tool. There's a little flyout for it. So flood fill and color changer are grouped together. Make sure you're choosing the color changer. And again, if, you, is this, if this is a feature you haven't used before, this is where the learning center again is incredibly helpful. So let me just pull out the learning center so you can kind of see this. And even though I wasn't using it, the, the Learning Center, to pick my tools, because I've chosen something here from the toolbox, the Learning Center has also updated, so it's current. So it's actually um, kind of interactive. It, it just shows you what you need to know at the time. So the color changer is incredibly simple. Basically, you pick the color that you want, and then click on the color you want to change. Now here's the best bit, is once you're using that color changer tool, it's actually live, meaning I can continue to click in the materials palette to find the exact shade that I want to work with. So if I go and do something, let's do something that doesn't look too strange. Here we go, it's kind of back to where it was. Let me just tuck that learning center out of the way. That gives me a lot more flexibility to experiment, just to play around, to get really the shade that you, that you want. Even better, um, if I, let me zoom out a bit, if I have a particular, um, let's say, let me zoom in a little more here, let's say I really like the color for a shirt and I would like, or, or something, uh, something else in the image, I want an accent color and that's what I'd like her, the color of her eyes to be, I'm going to choose that eyedropper tool uh, and again if you hold down the control key, it'll also toggle over to the eyedropper. I'm going to sample a color on her shirt. So let me make sure I'm actually on a layer with the color of her shirt showing. There we go. I'm going to go back to that color changer tool. And where I've drawn the eyes on that topmost layer here, I'm going to select that and basically very subtle change, but it complements another color in that image. So it gives you a really, you don't have to, to to be constrained by what you're working with. You can go ahead and go really as far as your imagination will let you with a handful of tools. So that's something from very subtle like blemish fixing to teeth whitening to eye color change. Now I was using this as a makeover tool, but with the with that color changer tool that I'm using, I can change anything I want. So even if it's not um, something that was sitting on a blank layer, like I painted eye color onto a, a blank layer, even if there's, say, the shirt in her, in her uh, photo, if you'd like to change the color of that, um, I can go ahead and use that color changer. So let me go ahead and choose, say, a green, and I can select her shirt and have it update. Now, with the color changer tool, be warned that it is actually looking at the entire image. So if I started changing um, let's say she had green in other parts of the image that I didn't quite like uh, or I didn't want changed, it would still change it. So just like the, the toothbrush, the way to constrain that or to just make sure that you're only changing color in a certain part of your image, let me undo the steps that I've just done here because I'm going to go back and use the selection tools that I was using before. And again, you don't have to be completely you know, on the mark quite often. It allows you to be kind of flexible. So I've just undone a bunch of steps here. So here's the original blue that we were working with. Uh, back in those selection tools, so in the toolbox, as the third option down, I'm going to go back to that freehand selection. And you know, accuracy does pay, don't get me wrong, but let me actually deselect that 
and just do a general selection around color for shirt. Uh, she does have a little more area over here, but I'm going to leave that alone just so you can see the difference. I'm going to choose that color changer tool that I had before, and I'm going to select the color from the materials palette. Let's go back to that green that we were using. And when I click now, you'll notice that it's not changing all of the color for shirt. It's actually left this behind. So whatever is in that selected area, that's what uh, the color it'll change. And again, the color changer is fantastic in that it continues to be active. So I can experiment with different options in the materials palette until I get just the shade that I'm looking for. There we go. Okay, I'm going to deselect that. Again, you can go up to the selections option, but the shortcut that I use quite often is just Control and D, and it'll deselect uh, whatever it is I have uh, in the marquee area. Okay, so that has gone through uh, a number of things. We've talked about skin smoothing and blemish fixing. Uh, we've done hair removal using the scratch remover, which is also fantastic for wrinkles, let me tell you. Um, toothbrush for tooth whitening, and we've also had a couple different ways of playing with eye color. Now, that is, um, I think, moderate changes, to be honest. You can get into some pretty... Um, interesting model makeovers or extreme makeovers if you like. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to one of my favorite brushes that when used wisely can be um, incredible and that's the warp brushes. So let me again I'm just going to duplicate uh, this particular layer that I was working on so I can show you the before and after quite easily. Now I'm going to call this warp warp brushes. Now, quite often we use these for fun because uh, they can be quite uh, extreme, but when used very gently, uh, you can get something that is a plastic surgeon can't tell the difference, let's be honest. <laughs> so let me come up over here and on the, the toolbox, right near the bottom, right before the, the um, art material brushes, so the oils and chalks and charcoals, right above that we have the warp brush. Now there's two different ways of using this. I'm going to go ahead, uh, Mesh Warp allows you to warp things along a grid. If I turn that on, you can see that if I turn that grid on, it allows me to start modifying things kind of in a very structured way. I'm not going to do that though. I'm going to go ahead and in this case, I'm going to choose the Warp Brush. And like the makeover brushes, there's several different kinds that you can use. So on the tools option bar at the top here, we have different, uh, different settings, quite a number of settings again, but this is one of those areas where if you kind of get a feel for it, you can get um, incredible results. So we have a push option. And so if I choose push, again, you'll see that it will just push pixels back and forth. Again, by default, quite often the brushes will be set to 100% strength. So if I turn this up, you'll see that it, it, it makes much um, more intense changes very, very quickly. That's not what I want. I, this is essentially like sculpting. So I'm going to bring the strength of this brush down quite a bit to probably about 25 to 30% so that I get much finer, gentler changes. So that's the brush, uh, sorry, the push tool. And the other two that I use are the expand and the contract. Let's be honest, I use the contract much more often. <laughs> um, just for having some fun, uh, there's other tools here as well. So twirl will allow you to essentially twirl things. Now this is if you're going to get a little, little fun and silly. I actually want to make this look like she's has everything that she wants. A bigger smile, if she wants a smaller nose, I'm not going to judge. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> so let's go ahead. I'm going to choose the push tool. And again, I tend to keep the brush size quite large and this, the, um, the strength of it quite low because that way I can get much finer, smaller adjustments because I, it's very, very easy to go overboard. So if I wanted to maybe adjust a bit of a chin or a tummy tuck or whatever it may be, you can do that quite, quite subtly. Uh, it's also a fantastic way of just increasing maybe a bit of a smile. So let me just tug at the corners of her mouth a little bit. If you go too far, it starts to look a little melted. Let's, uh, it looks a little strange. If I wanted to bring her lip down maybe a little bit, I can do that. Um, if I wanted to, quite often what I'll do is give yourself a little eyebrow lift. 
Again, so large brush size in my case and low strength allows me to do something that can be fairly, fairly subtle. The other area that uh, quite often I'll use is that, again, that contract button. So with contract, um, again, low strength uh, means that I get a very subtle result. So as I start to just brush, it contracts pixels towards the center of it. So if I wanted to make something, say, a little bit smaller, I can just gently brush along a, a jawline, a waist, arms, legs, whatever you want, ears even. Let's just give her a little bit of a finer, smaller ear. Um, if you want to increase eyes as well, so let's go ahead and just expand. And again, don't go too crazy. Sometimes a click or two is more than enough. Um, to make it look natural. Again, you don't want it to look like you've spent time touching it up. You want it to make it look like that's exactly how she looks every single day. So let me zoom out a little bit here. So I'm going to fit this image to screen. And to, where rather than show and hide all of these layers, I'm going to go back to the very original one we had. And I'm going to duplicate that. So I'm going to duplicate my very original background. And I'm going to drag it to the very top of my layers here. So here's the before. We touched on blemish fixing, skin smoothing, scratch remover for hair. Um, we adjusted the color of her eyes. We even gave her a facelift. If I turn the visibility off, there's our after. It's not bad, really, considering it took us mm, half an hour to go from this to that. Okay. So um, one of the um, one of the other things that I do like uh, once you save this out. Actually, let me let me be very <laughs> clear. I've been using layers to kind of give myself a little more control, organize the the way I'm working on my image, and allow me to kind of go back in time if I need to as well. Um, when you want to actually save this file out, if you wanted to continue working on it and preserve these layers, make sure that when you save it, let me go to File, Save As, save it as a layered file format. Uh, so the very Near the top option, you'll have PSP image, and you can save it as a, a full layered file. supports everything that you've been working on. It allows you to open up and, and go back and continue working on it. If you wanted to share it with others or, say, um, uh, post it, print it, whatever it may be, uh, you can save it as a JPEG. That will flatten the image. So you'll end up having, again, just one background layer to work with. So it, uh, it'll flatten the image and will allow you to continue working on it to the same way, but it means you could print, share, do whatever you need to. Um, it's just a standard file format. So that's kind of my tip to you. Um, the options that you have really are, it's huge. The range is huge. Like if I show you, for, uh, let me give you an example actually of, uh, I'm going to save this because I actually like it. And I might want to keep it. Okay. Oh, again, what did I just say? Save as a PSP <laughs> image file. Okay, there we go. Okay, save. Uh, let me show you some examples. So again, I'm, this was just one image that we worked on. Um, but I'd like to show you some kind of extreme examples of body sculpting that uh, that you can do with uh, with PSP. So I'm in the, this again, I'm showing this in X4. Uh, I'm actually going to be showing you a full screen review mode, which is available in the manage mode. Um, if you're using an older version of PSP, you're, it's, you'd be looking at the organizer having a full screen preview. Um, so this is a before, and this is an after. Again, there was a bit of, a little bit of sculpting in there, blemish fixing, toothbrush, and color changer, kind of a little bit of what we did today. Uh, here's the image that we worked on already. So here's before and after. Here's, a, here's an example of some extreme body sculpting. <laughs> it looks a little, a little hollow in the center there, but you have to know it less is sometimes more. Here's, a, here's an example of just simple all over fixes. So this is using fill light and clarity and noise removal. So again, if you have low lighting conditions, perhaps you don't need much work. I'm just going to apply a fill light and clarity, which is a new feature in X4 for those of you who uh, haven't used that yet. And then uh, our lovely, lovely Liz, who's on the line quietly in the background, who doesn't need anything done, but I needed a file to work with. So there's uh, just an after. So vignetting, which again is a new feature in X4, just an example of, of some of that work. This is where um, you can get a little extreme. This is actually the after versus the before. 
Yeah, I'm not too sure about that one. <laughs> um, now, I believe the next one may be a little risque, but all the ladies will appreciate this. Here's after. Here's before. Okay, so I call this the digital diet. You can work miracles with just a couple of brushes, and we all know that <laughs> that's what we're going to be doing when this thing is over. <laughs> Okay, so there's some examples of uh, what you can do with the makeover tools in, uh, and really all the tools in uh, PaintShop Pro.